Hey guys, it's Sean, and I'm in between screenings at this year's Toronto International Film Festival, and I very much just wanted to catch you up quickly on what I've been able to see so far, and what I'm still trying to get to in the next couple of days. Major titles have dropped already. You've probably read about Prisoners on the site, and you've read about The Fifth Estate, which officially opened the festival last night with Benedict Cumberbatch playing Julian Assange. I just came out of Jason Reitman's newest film, it's called Labor Day, and um, it is a definite step in uh, a more mature direction for him, something that I think he showed with Young Adult and that he's continuing to show with this film. Um, it's an emotional film, it's one of those films that definitely um, walks you through several difficult emotions, um, and it's one of those films that if you wanted to, you could nitpick the details, um, but if you start getting swept up in all the different major things that he's trying to say about... Um, the influence of a father on a family and uh, the importance of a family unit and for Kate Winslet's character the importance of just feeling um, human touch again uh, I think some of those larger themes uh, take you past some of the rough points in the film. Um, it's an adaptation of a novel. It's set over the course of a Labor Day weekend. Uh, Josh Brolin's character plays an escaped con who needs Kate Winslet's help, the help of her and her son, to sort of hide out while the police are looking for him. And it's just about the influence that he has on this mother and son. Now there's a dynamic to the mother and son that's talked about in the first few minutes of the film that I'm going to leave for you to, to figure out on your own. Um, and it's very important as to how their relationships all develop. Uh, the son is looking for a father figure. There's a, no man in his life. And he's starting to see some of that impact from Josh Brolin's character. It, it doesn't have any of the humor that, that uh, Reitman has brought to his other films. Even movies like Up in the Air uh, and Young Adult and Juno, um, they, they had bigger things to say about teen pregnancy and about unemployment. Uh, but they laced some humor throughout. Uh, there isn't a lot of humor in this. It's it's not somber. It's not serious. It's just mature. It's just grown up. It's um, it's a departure for Reitman, and uh, for the most part, I thought it worked really well. Uh, I had l more problems with the Fifth Estate, um, which I think just tackled too big of a story in trying to tell the WikiLeaks. Uh, tale. And, you know, someday I think that they'll do like a ten-part documentary on WikiLeaks and the impact that it's had on modern journalism, but it's really hard to fit all that into a two-hour time frame. Uh, Benedict Cumberbatch plays Julian Assange. He's a mysterious character, and Cumberbatch plays him as an enigma. Um, but there are, there are accomplishments that WikiLeaks had, a major accomplishments. They took down a, a Swiss bank, a, a major Swiss bank, a corrupt Swiss bank. They, they worked for uh, human rights activism in countries that desperately needed their help through the transparency that WikiLeaks provides. But, but the second half of the movie is where I think the meat really starts to uh, come off of the bone, and that's where the site gives safe haven to whistleblowers who want to leak... Um, Pentagon Papers and it's important U.S. documents uh, that have to do with our country's uh, involvement in the war in the Middle East. And that's an interesting story to tell. And, and there's a lot of stories that you could tell out of what's featured in the Fifth Estate. I just think it was um, a big challenge for Bill Condon, the director, to streamline this into a tight uh, two-hour package. And so um, maybe the film's just guilty of uh, biting off more than it could possibly chew. Um, I didn't get that impression from other films like Prisoners, which screened up here. I'm about to go into the Dallas Buyers Club, uh, which is getting a ton of great early buzz for Matthew McConaughey playing a man infected with HIV who uh, tries to circumnavigate the system to bring medication into the country to help uh, fellow patients. Um, so I'll come back with a blog post about Dallas Buyers Club, but I definitely want to get on the record about Labor Day because it's a special film and a different film and one that we won't be able to see until... Christmas time. I think Paramount's going to put it out around December 25th, possibly for awards consideration. And I do think people like uh, Kate Winslet, maybe Josh Brolin could, could get into that conversation. Uh, you always have to see how that race plays out. But Labor Day definitely moved me uh, in ways that I didn't anticipate, and I expect to get similar reactions out of Dallas Buyers Club. Oh, blue is the warmest color. Um, wow. I mean, just all of the emotions for Blue is the Warmest Color. Uh, you're hearing that it's the three-hour teen lesbian movie, and it's that, but, I mean, that's reductive. It's so much more than that. Um, it is the story of first loves and of immersion uh, in love with somebody. Uh, it's about a high school girl who, in crossing the street, locks eyes with a girl who she's instantly attracted to. 
uh, she meets her, gets to know her, falls head over heels in love with her. And it's about their relationship, um, physical, definitely, uh, and emotional. And it's graphic. Uh, I was not prepared, even reading about all of the uh, graphic nature of the sex scenes, I still was not prepared um, for how uh, intimate <laughs> and, uh, and graphic uh, it gets. But it's necessary because when the movie goes to the later stages of this couple's uh, relationship, you have to feel what they've been through. And I think we were discussing whether the movie needed to be three hours long, and I think it sort of earns almost every little bit of, of the time that you spend with this couple because when they go through there, uh, peaks in their valleys, uh, you you sort of sympathize with where they've been because you've been there with them. So uh, it's another very special one that I think you're going to want to put on your radar and seek out. So, so far, um, everything's been really good here at the festival. Uh, obviously, we're going to be covering it more on the site. Um, we still have Dallas Buyers Club coming. We have 12 Years a Slave and the big title on Saturday that everyone is talking about. The main title that everyone wants to hear about up here is Alfonso Cuaron's Gravity. So um, I'll be back talking about all of those specifically. I'll do a Dallas Buyers Club video podcast uh, as soon as I get out of it. I'll try and post it to the site and then we'll talk about Gravity and 12 Years a Slave over the weekend. So thanks so much for following our coverage here uh, on Cinema Blend from the Toronto International Film Festival and I uh, hope to see you guys up here sometime soon.